During the Brooklyn Dodger glory years of the late 40s and 1950s, Duke Snyder established himself as one of the greatest players in the game. He had 20 or more home runs in nine consecutive seasons between 1949 and 1957, and hit 40 or more home runs five straight seasons from 1953 to 1957. He led the league in home runs in 1956 with 43, and led the league in runs scored in 1953, 54, and 55. The biggest thing that happened to me was becoming a major league ball player and knowing in my own mind that I belonged in the major leagues. That probably more than important than anything else, to know in your own mind that you belong there and that you're good. I mean, that's not cockiness or overconfidence or anything else, but to know you belong and to know that you're good. And I think I, I got a little piece of that from Pee Wee, I got a piece of that from Jackie, I got a piece of that from Gil, I got a piece of that from most of my teammates. I learned a little bit from each one of my room with Carl Erskine and uh, there's no finer man that ever put on a baseball uniform than Carl Erskine and I learned a lot from Carl and I and I looked out and Erskine was out there. Pee Wee wasn't there because he was upset because he hadn't gotten in the Hall of Fame and I understood why and I mentioned it in my talk but uh, Buzzy Bavese was there, Pete Rosell was there, there's a lot of friends from Fallbrook were there, a lot of friends from from Brooklyn New York City, a lot of Dodger fans, a lot of my friends from Montreal were there, and it was just, it was so satisfying to know that they had come there to help me celebrate getting into the Hall of Fame. When the Dodgers reported for spring training in 1955, they were an aging team. All their mainstays, Robinson, Reese, Campanella, Hodges, Ferrillo, and Duke Snyder, were well into their thirties. Although no one said anything, many players felt that if they didn't finally win it all in 1955, they might go down in history as the greatest team never to win a world championship. You have to understand, we had a pitching staff, which was uh, Kyle Erskine, Newcomb, uh, well, Branker wasn't there then, uh, but every one of us was the same age. We were all 32 years old. We were all born in 1926. So we were all getting old, and we all knew our, our lives were limited as far as baseball is concerned in getting a chance to play and win in the World Series. The Yanks is dead. Johnny Padres pitched his heart out, and it's all over but the shouting and the tumult. The Dodgers win it 2 to nothing and win their first World Series. They were out-hit by a gallant Yankee team, but never outplayed, and this day will live long in the memory of Brooklyn, USA.